so in this video I'm installing a very minimal, or trying to be minimal, uh, lightweight virtual machine of Debian 10 with the i3 window manager and I'll install a couple of applications as well Firefox and probably a terminal emulator and I'm doing this in a virtual machine virtual box it's important when you're setting up your virtual machine in VirtualBox to choose a VMDK for the disk so that it can be interchanged with VMware and then you know I often have to make virtual machines for uh, testing for a group of people and it's handy to have an image ready and if you have a, an image that's like you know four or five gig mm -hmm. and you're copying it around uh, a room of say 15 people that can be quite problematic if you have a nice small OVA file um, it makes your life a lot easier now I was doing this over the weekend and I noticed that when you install Debian without a desktop environment there are about little more than 10 packages that I disagree with uh, being installed Telnet as an example I don't think I don't think we need Telnet I use VI for an editor so Nano doesn't have to be there for me um, task cell is for setting up the uh, the actual installer so yeah I'm gonna go over to VirtualBox now I've given this machine three 192 meg of RAM and a 5 gig hard drive and I've downloaded the Alpha 5 from here the MD64 and blah, let's spin up the virtual machine um, new background image on the installer that's Wow, okay. So we we're, we're really are getting close to stable here. So keep it simple. Go for a graphical install. And I'll just adjust the screen here if, if anything's out of focus. But we should be all right. I'll just budge this guy over a wee bit so we can see the full thing. There we go. Right, so um, English, because I have a UK keyboard, I'm going to go United Kingdom, British, um, I like this as well, this uh, artwork up here, the blue is darker than Debian 9 was more of a sort of a lighter colour, so. And in the alpha releases it's been it's been Debian 9 up here, but this is obviously the proper 10 installer, so. Um, my virtual machine, I've given a 5 gig uh, VMDK, not a virtual box disk image, a VMDK because I'm hoping that I can transfer this machine to a VMware host. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking to create a single OVA file with as little nonsense in it as possible, very small, and um, hopefully it will zip down to just one gig, but I don't want to go down the road of using puppy Linux or, you know, tiny core Linux. Um, I want it to be a full a full experience just just as light as possible okay so we'll just leave the host name as Debian no domain name right <clears throat> root password I'm just gonna make really easy oh. let's take that out there okay full name for a new user Michael Username Michael, password, wonder what this is. Okay, configuring the clock, detecting disks. Now, if, the, if I had a big disk here, and when I say a big disk, I mean like 40 gig or over, not big by today's standards, but if we weren't doing this in a very small virtual machine, I would just hammer guided using entire disk, but we're gonna go manual on the partitioning because we do, out of this 5 gig disk we've got, let's just, so look, we've got, when you choose 5 gig in the virtual environment, it always gives you a little bit more. So we're going to use that 0.4 as the swap space. Okay, we're going to have 400 meg of swap space. Um, might seem like overkill. Let's just, let's just go for it anyway. So, we choose the disk, this is the, the whole disk, right? Click next on that. Um, you've selected a device for a partition, hit continue. Right, so we've created a 
primary partition in here. So let's continue on there. Create a new partition. Let's take out the five and we'll use the point four. And we're going to make this logical. And it's always, I mean, I don't know how much truth there is in this, but I always put the swap space at the start of the disk. Um, I think that was more important when we used to use physical disks. So choose use as and change this to the swap area. All right, and then done. And then it's fairly plain sailing. Now we've got five gig free space. Continue, create a new partition. Full, full, and this time we'll make this the primary partition. And we're gonna um, turn the bootable flag on. All right, so it boots. We'll, we'll put the, uh, the bootloader in there. Okay, uh, so we've got two partitions, swap space at the start, and the primary partition there with B for the boot flag on, EXT4. Continue there. Right, do I want to accept that? Absolutely. Okay, and here's where it's gonna grab the base system. So, um, more than likely gonna pause the video here, depending on how quick this is. But maybe I should do this live just to show you how fast this actually can be. Um, yeah, I mean, I was experimenting with this at the weekend and I, I installed XFCE and then tried to strip XFCE down, but it does add a lot of like, I don't really like the menu in XFCE. There's just extra stuff in there that you just don't need. And it adds this weird Debian menu with like links to shell script in it and I couldn't figure out how to get shot of it and then it ended up stripping so much out of it that I broke XFCE. There's one thing that I do like from XFCE, the terminal, XFCE terminal. It, you can tell that it's not as like, it doesn't have as kind of fancy rounded edges as the GNOME terminal, um, GNOME, GNOME uh, terminal, okay, but it does have um, it is very lightweight, so I think I think I'm kind of sold on it because you can change the, the the font color and you can change the font and then it's pretty much the same as the the other terminal, right? Do you wish to scan a DVD? No, I don't. Package manager for some reason, um, FTP UK oh FTP UK Debian dot org has been giving me a bit of grief recently, so I've been using this Annex dot net mirror. I don't know why, no proxy. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, XFCE terminal, I was, I was very impressed by how, how small the, the package was and how lightweight it was and configurable, just as configurable as the GNOME terminal, but definitely not as heavy. I think it's only 8,000 kilobytes, the whole thing. So um, I'm sold on XFCE terminal. That's one thing I'm glad about. Still on XFCE. Okay, so, and also I might not have to do as much cleaning up of this one as I did of the Alpha 5. The Alpha 5 had a nasty, um, a, it could be a bug or it could be a new feature or something, but, right, package user survey, we'll not bother with that today. Popularity contest, give that a misc. Task cell, see this thing here, that could go right. So no desktop environment, um, no print server. We will take an SSH server though, and we'll, we'll have to take standard system utilities, otherwise we'll have literally nothing. Okay, so Cinnamon and Mate, I believe, are sort of GNOME 2, XFCE. Um, I mean, it was nice. If you had a, a small computer then, absolutely go for it. So I've given this virtual machine three one nine two gig of ram to do this installation but my intention was to turn it down a little bit <clears throat> after the install all right so 132 files to download that's them downloaded and we have to unpack those 132 files and hopefully we should be winning very soon um, another thing about Debian 10 as well is um, you can't do shutdown anymore. Shutdown is gone. You have to do systemctl, power off. 
Um, so everything seems to be under System D now. I know some people hate System D. Uh, system V, System D doesn't get me up or down. I don't, I'm not bothered about it. Okay, so select and install software. Thinking, 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 thinking. Configuring the manual database. Python 3, open SSH. Some dictionaries that we're probably going to delete. I think that might be us. That's how quick it is. What's this video sitting on? 11 minutes. <clears throat> right, install the grub bootloader for the MBR. Yep. Mind and choose the right one. Okay. And there we go. Finishing the installation. Up and running in. Installation is complete. Make sure to remove the installation media. So I'm just going to go to in devices on VirtualBox and I'm just going to, oh, it's grayed out. Okay. Hit continue. That's it. 11 minutes on the whole machine set up. And we're in. Okay, so, oh, I think I might zoom this screen in a little bit. Oh, I don't think I can make this any bigger. I think I'm literally at the, okay, we might have to live, oh, we might have to live with that white line up the side of the screen. <sighs> we'll survive. Okay, so let's log in. So logging in is Michael, password in, and we're in. So free minus M. I gave it, we're using 62 meg of our three gig of RAM that we've, we've, we've set up for the installation. So the first thing to do is let's elevate to root. Okay. And if we do an apt, we don't even have to do get anymore. Apt update minus Y. Let's just grab any packages we need to update. Okay, cool. And let's do an apt upgrade minus y. Good, everything. Now, I turn this camera around a little bit. That's a bit better. Okay, so Okay, so let's just put this mic here as well. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, so um, nothing to upgrade. Nothing. Let's do an apt auto clean. Top of I was actually typing in apt auto clean. Right, good. So if we do an apt list. Minus minus installed, okay, and then we can see all the stuff that's on the system. All right, now straight away there's a lot of libraries there. So what I normally do is make a grep um, to uh, grep minus v for inverse, and then anything that starts with lib ignore and that gives us our doesn't give us the nice green color but it gets rid of everything with uh lib at the start all right and then if we put that in our word count minus l we got 100 and oh yeah uh, oh let me just bring that to the top of the screen okay so apt installed grep and ignore anything that starts in library tell us how many 170 packages all right, and let's just list those out. So, straight away, one that I can see here is Telnet. We do not need Telnet. And just under Telnet, if you can see, um, I don't know about how I can do this, how I can highlight stuff, because my mouse doesn't work with no graphical environment. 
But if you look right in the in the middle of the screen here, let's go. So you got from the bottom Vim, Util, USB, UDEV, TZ Data, Traceroute, Telnet, and these Task Cell. Task Cell is task selection for installing. All right. So those two need to go. So first thing we'll do is we'll do at purge Telnet task. Let's just do Telnet first. Yeah, get rid of that. Now, let's get rid of task, task cell as well. Okay, there's also another program for ejecting floppy disks. Purge, eject, we don't need that either, so get rid of that. Just don't, just don't need it, all right? Now, this is where we go to Google and we get a web page called um, Reduce Debian. If you just go to Google and type in Reduce Debian, it will take you to this page. Okay, let me just move this. Oh, not that guy. Not that guy. This guy. Hmm. Okay, well, like, let me just, let's just fucking, let's just move this all the way off the screen then if it's going to be a dick about it. And then bring this back. Oh, and then put it back to that. Does it have to be so? And there's us with our little like, nice white, deliberate white border there. Okay, so. And now we need the browser. Right, so reduce Debian. This is a great page I found when I was trying to make a small, um, and it gives you a list of all this stuff that you don't need. Um, so what I normally do is just batter through this list. So I'll have this list open in the background, which you can easily find online. And I'll pop this open in a window over here, and I'll bring my virtual machine over here. Okay, and let's get that in there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's good. All right, so first thing, let's just do apt purge um, ACPI. Not there. Now, you'll notice that some common dictionaries, iAmerican, iBritish, uh, OpenSSH server and stuff, have decided they're not needed. So let's just do apt auto remove okay and that's going to get rid of another four mega junk um let's just fire the dictionary on american then okay removing some stuff okay Right, we just going to make this window a bit more manageable so I can actually think what I'm doing. Okay, move that over to there. Move this guy up to here. All right, so let's get rid of apt purge aptitude. Not there. Okay, a spell gone. AT gone um, BC anything to do with cups as well cups is for printers common unix printing utility get rid of that oh okay uh, what else do we have in here Debian FAQ There's another 1.3 kilobytes, 1.3 meg, and um, Debian FAQ, and let's just do a star on that, in case there's any French. Cool, they're all gone. 
Right. Um, we got rid of eject floppy disk utilities. Is that still in there? Let's do F disk. Um, FD utils. That's gone. Get text base. Let's check that. Uh, oh, 22 meg. Monster of a package. Okay, do you really want to have all grub to? No, I don't. Oh, I hope I've not just broken the system by doing that. Uh, CD to slash boot. Let's have a look. Grub's still there. Um, and we've only got one kernel. That's something else you want to check. You want to come in here and just make sure. Um, apt purge info. Okay. Uh, let's just apt install grub again. Uh, get text base as needed. Right. Thank God we got that back in then, because that would have that would have screwed us if we lost um, grub. Right, Mr. Tools, MTR Tiny. Um, to purge M Tools. Um, let's do update. This update grub's broken again. Update grub's been broken for like two releases. Honestly. You need to go to now this is how you fix up oh, so update grub right was was working in Debian 9. It's not been I don't know if it's a security thing or if it's a new feature or if you've got to do something with system D now or something, but if you can't slash user spin update grub, it's there. Okay, now, if we were to run this, it's going to chuck an error at us, saying, um, found grub, but line 116, grub command not found. Right, see if we do, there's something we do need to install. Install vim. Actually, we should just, just, I'll just get through this stupid list first. Um... Okay, so let's purge nano. Get rid of that since we've installed Vim. Um, what else can we get rid of? Let's see. I think that's about it. No, it's not even installed. So now if we go way back to our command, if we do apt list. Minus minus installed and then grep into a um, starts with lib um, and uh, inverse. So just ignore that and then do a word count lines 154. Okay, so we got rid of um, 16 packages there that we, did, in my opinion, we didn't need. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that catches my eye in here. Net tools. It's not even installed anymore. Okay. Uh, that's good. Oh. Whip tail. It's only 71 kilobytes, but just don't need it. Um, oh, okay. So, is finger installed? Okay, so this then tells you that you can go on and do stuff and then do more stuff, uh, changing what app recommends and stuff. And then you can replace like these commands with uh, lighter alternatives. Let's just do an apt, apt all remove. All right, now, before we go and install i3, I'm gonna go and get uh, update grub working. So we cd to slash 
um, let's just do vim slash user sbin update grub. Was this was it this that I fixed? Line one hundred and sixteen. So it's one one six. Hmm. I found a blooming guide on how to fix this the other day. It basically just involves not looking. Turns out Etsy grab config. I'm sure the machine was deployed. Changed in grub two. This isn't helping me at all. Okay, let's hope that we haven't broken the machine uh, on reboot. That'd be very annoying if we did. Okay, so things that we want to install now is we want to now install. Now that we've got, so let's just do df minus cage space dot. Okay, so we're using 1.1 gig of the disk. Um, and we have 3.3 gig available. This is of our 5 gig disk. Uh, there we go. Amazing what apt clean does. So we've stripped the system down. Apt. Let's do an auto clean. Okay. That's so weird. Whatever. Okay. So I like the look of that number. So we've stripped the operating system down to 991 meg, but we've not taken anything away from the functionality. So now what we need to do is install the window manager. So I'm going to install i3. So to do this, just apt install um, xorg and i3. And those are the two things that we need, xorg and i3. Okay. This is going to take 400 meg. Ouch. It hurts. Let me just move this so you can see. 400 meg. That's so much. Okay, so. What's it going? Y you wonder what half this stuff is. Um, and do we really need it? Like. Will be installed. Suggested packages. Hmm. Okay. Let's go and grab this. So this is basically like, this is our desktop environment now. I mean, 400 gig, 400 meg isn't too much for a desktop environment. Although, if I was a little bit better at this, I could probably be more picky about what I installed here. Um, so there we go. So once this installs, we should have enough to start the window manager. And once we start the window manager, we should be able to install the open uh, virtual machine tools. Um, Can hear the old uh, 
the old Core i5 crunching away there. So I'm just going to start making a list over in Sublime Text of what it is we need to install. I should keep notes of when I fix these things. Like, yeah, yeah, stable change log. Don't care. I don't want a new version. Okay, so we want to get the VirtualBox guest x11 tools. We also want to install the open VMware tools. So this is going to work. I, see, ideally, we want this to work on both. Yep, open VM tools as well. I want this to work on both VirtualBox and VMware. Right, that's clear. Bring her down. All right, so um, <clears throat> I've spelt it wrong. Virtual box guest X eleven. Okay, we can go and troubleshoot that later. Let's just get the open VM tools and that's all good okay so once this is completed we will do the first reboot let's just have a look at what damage that did. So we're still only using 70 meg of RAM, but DF minus cage. We're up to 1.3, so that would make sense with our clean. So yeah, 1.3. Okay, cool. So I'm pretty sure it was only one gig, even with i3 in. Uh, VMware could be a virtual box thing okay let's reboot ha huh, we can't do that anymore system CTL reboot right so please tell me well okay grubs working good We're back. Okay, let's just move her in to shop. Logging in as Michael. Uh, Michael. Okay. Shall we start X? Bit nervous about this. Yes, it's worked. Okay, so this is what we see so far. All right, I'll move this in a shot so you can see it. Okay, so this is i3 window manager we're into now. So yes, we want to generate um, the config um, and want to make my uh, modifier alt because, because I'm using GNOME on the, um, the my base operator on my actual computer here. Every time I hit Windows, it's going to jump back to to my actual computer. So I found that using Alt as the uh, modifier key is far better. Okay, so that's it. So let me just try and get you a, a full screen view of this, a proper view. Let's drag this along. Does not want to get. Let's just man, let's just move that up. So this is all we this is all we've got. We see a one in the bottom corner because this is desktop environment one. We see how much disk space we've got. We see my IP. We see we're not running on battery because it's a desktop computer. And yeah, that's it. So you might think, what do we do now? Well, the answer is not very much. Um, I'm actually going to reboot the machine. Uh, I just wanted to check that that worked. So let's let's give the machine a reboot. Uh, 
and then let's start her up again. Okay, it's decided to go to full retard. Okay, move that down a little bit. Oh, what is going on? Okay, let's log in as Michael. Sounds similar. Okay, right. Um, now, what did I say I wanted? The two packages that I feel that you need are a web browser. So we're going to go ahead and escalate to root. Firefox. Okay. Oh. ESR. What? 352 meg? Shut up. There's no way you need 600 meg of data to install Firefox. What's all this open office core and everything? Oh, no. Sorry, but no, I'm not doing it. Let's apt install xfce4 terminal. My new favourite terminal. That wants to install 90 meg. Why does it keep suggesting all this this crap? I had a Wata icon theme and all that. Right. I'm gonna go online and get the switch for apt to tell it. Um, do not recommend packages. Minus minus minus. Right. Minus my minus no minus install minus recommend. So no. They're not getting to install. And we need, we can't just use a sort of quick app, I call it. We need to use the full app to get. Uh, minus, minus, no, minus, install, minus. Try this. It still wants to install the Idawata icon theme, glib networking, uh, other crap. Eighty-seven, eighty-nine meg of additional disk space. Um, how to install apt get without installing recommendations? No install recommends. Do not consider recommended packages. So it should be. All right, let's install it then. So you get more and more um, fanatical about what's on the system and what's not after stripping out those sort of 17 packages at the beginning suddenly you think you're like a specialist and you know you get very annoyed at every single thing that wants to be installed so it fetched 20 megabyte of archives something else happened something else happened it's getting some stupid icon theme some other icon theme hate these icon themes libgtk3 Okay, now let's see if we can do an apt clean and a df kh space dot up to 1.4 gig now, annoyingly so. Okay, let's um, let's try the Firefox command again. Still wants to install 250 meg. No. So let's That's better. OK, 
Okay, so it was actually me putting in the wrong command. It's apt get install, minus minus no, minus install, minus recommends. Okay, that's better, 44 meg. I wish I'd done that with the XFC terminal now. Maybe I should purge it. It's very annoying. I'm annoyed. I should have taken a screenshot. literally installing the minimum amount of stuff which is what we want okay um, right let's purge XFC4 terminal And everything that came with it. All this crap. Okay, clear. And now let's use that command. Let's do an apt auto remove actually. Apt clean. Yes. Get rid of all that crap. And then let's do this thing. XFC4 terminal. Now it only wants to install 8 kilobytes of additional space. What we should have done in the first place. That's quick. Okay, clear that out. And let's do uh, clean. Auto remove df minus k space dot 1.6 gig. Okay, so let's now we're ready to exit and start x. Start up the window manager. Okay, we're in to the. Here we are in the. Let's make this a bit smaller so we can so we can deal with it. Let's make it like a manageable size. And then let's put it in the middle here. Alright, so here we are in the um let's just shrink this down a little bit. I want you to be able to see the full thing there. That's a nice nice position. Alright, so here's my that's my full screen. So Alt D brings up D menu. Okay, and now I can do XFCE for terminal. And there's my terminal. Okay. So the tweak that I like to make with this terminal is just go to preferences, colors, and I quite like this one for my text, roughly about here. And it didn't work because I've set that to something else so you really need to pay attention here uh, this colors colors text color this one close all right and that looks like that okay so free minus n okay so now we're running a desktop environment we're running a terminal and we're only using 125 meg of our three gig of RAM. And what I've noticed on this is if you run this window manager on your laptop, it uses very minimal battery. Okay, so let's open Firefox and see what horrors horrors we have in store. There's two there. Let's just go for the basic Firefox. Okay. Here's our Firefox. Now, we want to make this a bit bigger. We just do that, although annoyingly um, hides the toolbar. Okay, and this is the first start for Firefox. So, what I'm going to do um, is go to my preferences and uh, make default show a blank page um, home page uh, 
leave that leave the font save files to download um, search okay use the address bar for search provide search suggestions let's just get rid of all this poison Amazon get rid of Google get rid of eBay Twitter and let's just use DuckDuckGo as our main search engine so we'll scroll up here and just change it to DuckDuckGo okay um, privacy remember logins and passwords we can do that never remember history restart okay back she comes okay so let's just see I wonder if video will work with so with so little like codecs and stuff Click on a total random video. I don't want to click on anything that's like that's bad. Remind me later. Think of something that's not gonna have copyright reasons. Let's do. Something with some animation in it. Will you look at that? Got it. Oof. Does not like running video. Got a feeling video doesn't work. Try another video. There we go. Look at that. Video working. And if we had audio turned on, that would work as a menu. Hit all F. Uh, also mixer oh command not found interesting there's pulse audio on here okay power view control oh, right. Act, install also mixer I mean I don't know how it would work because there's there's no sound card on this but Spell install. Oh, it doesn't exist. Okay, let's not worry about sound just now. Sounds another video. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. There's my Firefox. There's my terminal. I mean, what other packages do you need? You need Office. Install Open Office. You need a PDF reader. Install a PDF reader. Really, as simple as that. You do not need anything else. Um, Let's just kill this window, so modifier and quit. And let's go to CD2 in my home directory. Okay. Now in here, there's a little directory called, so if we do an LS minus LA, you see some, uh, some default stuff. So if we go into dot config, you'll see there's an i3 config file there, okay? Let's just cut out the X. Well, let's just Okay, so these are these are directories, right? So let's CD to XFC4 terminal. Cat terminal. Lots of directories. CD to terminal. Terminal runtime config. Cat terminal run. Okay, and this just tells you the color palette and stuff. All right, so This doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. 
Weird. I have not seen this before. This is meant to be the i3 config file. CD to i3. Right. Now. Okay. So here's our i3 config file. Now. I like to delete some of these comments and start it off at there. Okay, we don't need that. That's our modifier key. Okay, so that's our font. I like to just turn that up a little bit. So undo. I'm going to insert mode. And let's make that 10. Okay, actually, there's an even better one below. Let's get rid of this line. Um, delete. And let's just pop this up to sort mode. Let's pop that up to 10. Okay. And the next one is to do with the flowing modifier. Start a terminal. Start D menu. Right, there's also a new, yeah, there's this thing here. So this will suggest only programs in the, uh, in the D menu rather than telling you a lot of. Uh, like shell scripts and stuff that are on the computer. So let's just comment. Where's the hash key on this keyboard? Tell me I've got an American keyboard. Oh, there we go. Okay, so all our we change I like in an initial config is just to change this um, status command, um, change this position to top. Okay, so just in here, okay, and then it's can all modifier R, and there we go, bigger font, uh, nicer font, bars at the top now. So I made the virtual machine and I exported it as an OVA file. And you can see here's the final output. Now because I used the VMDK format, this should in theory work with VirtualBox and VMware interchangeably, the single file. Um, however, I'm gonna test that and I'll probably update that in a further video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope that's been helpful.